Kyle Korver joins us, and we'll open it up to questions from the media. <coughs> Andy Larson. Kyle, all I know about your, your knee injury was that it was just knee soreness. Did you ever kind of figure out something that was kind of behind that soreness or any you know reason that it popped up at the end of the year? Uh, it was just a really bad bone bruise. Uh, Kyle, how have you just enjoyed this season in Utah, and where do you kind of see your career going in forward here? Um, it was great being here again. Um, um, you never know how things are going to work out all the way. You know, I think we knew we were going to end up somewhere different at some point during the year. And um, honestly, Utah wasn't really on our radar. I didn't know this was a possibility. Um, and it was great to come back and see a lot of the good. There was a lot of good the first time I was here. The organization, the city, a lot of that. Um, and to see how everyone has added. The organization's better than it was the first time I was here. Um, the city is better. A lot of things are better. And so to come back here and be a part of that, um, uh, it was a nice surprise to the year. Um, Where my career goes, I'm not sure. We'll see. Can you expound a little bit on how the organization and city are better and what that might mean for attracting people here down the line? Yeah, I think um, I think uh, the organization is just, it's evolved and it keeps on getting smarter. I think they've really um, examined all the details of how you make a team great and what a team needs to be successful. Um, I think, uh, you know, Quinn and the coaching staff just keep on evolving. I think we have, I think Quinn is, if not the best, one of the best coaches in the NBA as far as how he sees the game and reads the game and communicates the game to his players, um, putting together game plans. He's really, really good, guys. Um, I think the organization, how they've, how they support us, this facility, um, you know, how we operate on, on a on a day to day basis is is first class all the way. Um, the food that we get here every day these are the little things, and but you asked about players coming here, it's a big deal. The food here is amazing. I, I'm excited to come here for breakfast in the morning. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a long list. Uh, the city is, I mean, it's a it's a great city. I think we all know that. It's full of amazing people, kind, good people. Um, it's a great place for, for families. Um, um, this is just a really good place to be. Kyle, over your last month, you released the Players' Tribune article, and then you had the comment on Donovan after the media had left. What's prompted this kind of vocal leadership from you? Is something required it, or is it just you know kind of getting later in your career? Yeah, I don't know. I just um, sometimes things get put on your heart, and uh, you feel like you're supposed to say them. You know, I would, there's not a big elaborate plan behind it all. It's just, um, I mean, the the players' Tribune piece was something that I've been working on for probably about a year. It's something that I've you know, and then just feels like things kept on lining up where it just felt like this was supposed to happen. And uh, yeah, that's a whole other conversation. But um, yeah, I think you just, I don't know, there wasn't anything behind it. Just it's what I was felt was put on my heart and wanted to, wanted to give words to it. Kyle, do you still have the competitive fire to want to keep this thing going? I, I, I apologize for the ageist question, but at 38, is it, do you still have that intrinsic motivation to keep your playing career going? <laughs> Yeah, you know, this is a, it's, it's a loaded question. I think uh, I still love playing basketball. I think um, just for me personally, it's been a long few years just with uh, a couple trades, a couple long seasons, ending in heartbreak, um, you know, uh, my brother dying. It's been a lot in the last few years. You know, three little kids. Try to have a good marriage. Try to balance it all. You know, it takes a lot. There's a there's a real cost as you get older. There's like a, you know, there's all the 
what you put you need to put into the game, but there's also a family cost. And that's probably where I'm at, is weighing that cost. Um, you know, so this would be a decision that I sit down and make with my wife and my family. And, um, you know, there's a big part of me that wants to have a, this is a longer off season than I've had in quite a few years. I say, hey, this is an opportunity to really work and, you know, to get a little time away, but then really work. And then I haven't got really gotten to do that the last two off seasons. And so there's part of me that wants to do that. And there's part of me that's tired right now. So, uh, like I said, we'll uh, talk to my, my wife and my family. And, you know, if there's the juice left, I'd still love to do it. We'll find out. Kyle, the impression we got uh, and what we heard that this team was really close. It's a bunch of great guys, all that stuff. Will you characterize you and compare that to your experience maybe throughout your career? Hmm. It is, it is unique in the NBA. There's always everything, you know, everyone's always got, you know, you have a couple teammates you get along with. Um, I haven't been in many like bad locker rooms where got, no one gets along, but it was, it was very unique here. You know, to be, to be a, an NBA player, you have to have a certain level of confidence and a certain level of drive and a certain level of, belief in yourself and desire to beat the guy next to you. That's a big part of our job, is the competitive nature of what we do. But, you know, I think, you know, Dennis and the team and the organization, they've brought in high character guys who are able to balance, you know, wanting to maximize who they are, but also caring about the guy next to them. It's a hard thing to do in the NBA because it's such a competitive nature, uh, so such a competitive business. and. I think it always starts with your best players. That's where this usually starts with. And, um, you know, Donovan being a young guy has really embraced that, which is really rare. Um, you know, he's, he's a hard worker. He, uh, he's very humble. Um, you know, the teams that I've been on have close locker rooms. The leader is always the most humble guy. And, and Donovan is that. Um, so I think it starts with him. It starts with uh, the coaching staff and how they hold everyone accountable. You know, oftentimes coaches are afraid to kind of bite the top guy. And that tends to, there's this like, you know, trickle down reaction or uh, yeah, reaction of how play other players receive that and how that top guy can treat everyone else. And that doesn't happen here. Quinn's just as hard on our top guys as he is on anyone else, if not harder. So I think it's a combination of a lot of those things that um, have made our locker room what it is.